whatever. You might be the baddest fellow on the block. Your resources will run out because there'll be someone come on the block sooner or later who will be better than you. You might be the prettiest girl on the block, but soon someone will come who's prettier than you. So his resources ran out. And the Bible said, when his resources ran out, it seems a strange thing, but it's a true thing. And it happened then, it's happening now. The Bible says when his resources run out, his friends run out. Huh? Huh? See, as long as you can give me, I can hang around. See, there's no such thing, no true friend no more, you know. You all right? You're talking Charles, he's my best friend. <laughs> you better check yourself. <laughs> you know, best friend no more now. Huh? She's your best friend as long as you want to hear your business. She's the best friend as long as you want to know what you're doing. But when it gets to where if she had to stand up against you, you'll find yourself saying, man, you really did that to me? There's no such thing as no best friend. Where the resources ran out. All them fellas in the bar, when he ran there, he could get a free drink. He gave them a free drink. All those mothers who had him to take their daughters to the debutant ball, you. The Bible says, but there was one fellow in the city who had some hogs. Now, first you must understand this. The Jews and hogs don't go hand in hand too well because they see them as being nasty and dirty and that. And the only job he could have gotten, they humiliated him. And when your money and resources run out, when your talent run out, in the far country, they, re- they will embarrass you. That's what they will do with you. They will bring you right down to nothing. That's why I stick with the Lord. The Lord will continue to elevate you. Anyone else pulls you down. When his resources run out, they say, come, we got some pigs down here to feed. Now watch the story. If you read the story closely, or when you go back, if you didn't read it, read it closely. They brought food for the pig. But didn't bring any food for him. So if he wanted anything, he had to do what? Eat the pig's food. But watch God. See, there's a joy. Now, as dismal as that sound, I tell you, see what God said. Remember, we started in, this, in the first couple of uh, lines in John 14 and 6. It says, let not your heart be troubled. God is going to fix some stuff for you now. Watch God. While this boy was down in the far country, every moment his mother got, she prayed for him. The Bible doesn't say, but what's the story? She prayed, for, she prayed for him. And so one day, while he was going through all of that, hungry, dirty, hog smelling, he came to his senses. What brings you to his senses? When prayers will go up on your behalf. His mother prayer was going up for him. And he came to the and said, wait a minute, hold on now, wait a minute. Why am I here? Could I tell you that a whole lot of young men and young ladies who are doing foolish things, they're asking that same question. They're asking that same question, why am I doing this? What caused me to do this? I don't know, I'm better than this. But they just need someone to encourage them. They need someone to encourage them. Why am I living like this? Why every night I go to work, I come home, I get dressed up, go to the bar for happy hour, after happy hour, go close down the nightclub, and that's next morning I go to bed feeling, go to wake feeling like a rat. Why am I doing this? They want to stop. So this boy said, why am I living like this? My father have, I know I took a third of what we had, but two thirds still there. And knowing my father already invest that to get some more. Why am I here? In my father's house is food. And he didn't stop. They said even the servants had more than enough. Why am I out here eating a whole husk? Hear me, parents. Hear me, elder person. Hear me, counselors. Young people out there are waiting for the wife. We need to go to them and hear the cry. We need to hear the cry. Some of them are asking why. 
You have some who came in here this morning from the yesterday experience with the why on their mind. They ask them why. But how do we help them when they ask the why? Do we tell them, go on, you don't mess up, you don't no good? Huh? You don't do all this what you're coming here for now. Or do we say, the Bible says, he got up, he said, I'm going home. I'm going home. I don't care what daddy say. I don't care what mama say. I'm going home. When I get there, I can tell I don't want nothing. I don't want to be in the fellowship of my family. Good God from Zion. I don't want, I don't want to be in, my, in the fellowship. I don't want nothing. Make me a hired servant, but keep me under the covering. He understood when you leave the covering and go to a far country, you catch hell. So he wanted to get back under the covering. He said, I don't care. I don't care what they say. I'm going back. The Bible says, watch this. That's the powerful part of the story. The powerful part of the story is right here. The Bible says, when he made up his mind and he began to walk home, he was going with all kinds of things in his mind. 